Hello and welcome to another episode of the Closure Pills screencast, a screencast dedicated to the um, functions in the Closure Standard Library. And the content of the screencast is roughly based on the book I'm writing, the Closure Standard Library and Annotated Guide. So if you enjoy the kind of things we are talking in this screencast, you might very well enjoy the content of the book, which contains um, expanded examples, tables, and many other things that I cannot show in the screencast. Uh, that is the website uh, for the book, and below my Twitter handle at Rebog if you want to get in touch. And in this episode, we are going to see uh, range, a uh, nice little function that is very often used in examples uh, to show anything that has to do with the sequence manipulation. Um, but range has a little bit more uh, interesting aspects that are uh, not used usually that are interesting to know and might be useful. And so the typical way you use it is to uh, pass it uh, an upper limit, in this case 10, and range generate a sequence of numbers starting from 0, that's one default, up to the given end, 10, and using a step of 1, which is another default. But you can decide that you want to start from another number, and if you pass two arguments, you can exactly obtain that. The first argument becomes the start of the sequence, the second one is the end. And you can change then the step, and for example if you want even numbers, you pass a step of two instead of one, and range will take care of that. Uh, you can pass negative steps, and for example you can go down instead of going up, and uh, you can also generate uh, other types of number that are not necessarily integers and you can do that by passing uh, a step that is not uh, a long and for example if you want to go from 0 to 5 in step of 0 0.5 you'll get doubles and if you use a ratio and well, let's do one tenth from 0 to 1 then you get a list of ratios instead. Um, range can also be invoked with no arguments. In that case, it's generating the infinite sequence. So you don't want to type that at the REPL. And you always want to take a few elements from uh, the infinite sequence, uh, but it works basically the same. Um, uh, range is also taking care of um, uh, promoting uh, the number, the long, into um, big int in case you go beyond, you cross the limit of the maximum range for longs. And we can see that if we, for example, um, take a range that goes from slightly below uh, the long max value, for example, 3 below that, and 3 above that, long max value 3. And you can see that the last uh, two numbers of this sequence are big ints. And you can maybe, we can maybe double check mapping type to it, and we can see we, we go from a long to a big int when we cross the boundary of the maximum range for longs. Um, we can use range uh, to generate the sequence of numbers and usually those are used uh, for example to generate indexes that then are used on top of other sequences to create a more complex behavior. Um, I want to show you an example on about how you could you can use range uh, to find if a string is a palindrome, for for example. So um, this is one example of a long palindrome. Um, was it a car? 
or a cut I so and a palindrome is a string that can be read both sides and has got the same meaning so in this case we got spaces in it so we'll have to remove them if we want um, to reverse the string and read it the same way and we, we also need to remove them if you want to verify if this string is a palindrome. Um, there are many ways you can do that. Uh, the one I want to show you in this screencast is the following. Um, so say uh, we start from the middle of the string. So what should happen is that if I gradually move two indexes from the middle one up and one down, incrementing and decrementing respectively, and I uh, verify the letter at that index, what I should find is that the letter is the same. If this happens for all the letters down to the two extremes, like the two W's that you see here, then, and all of them are the same, then uh, this is a palindrome. Um, you, there are other ways you can uh, search for, for a palindrome, uh, but this one makes good use of uh, range and for like very, very long string, makes good use of laziness of range as well. And we'll see a little bit of that uh, when we talk about performance of, of range. So if we go back, let's try to code this up. So uh, we're going to have a function called palindrome that takes uh, a sequence of letters that we're going to convert that string into a sequence anyway and then we need to uh, store a count for those letters and also uh, the sequence of indexes that we want to access the sequence with and this is where we can use range so let's call it x and we'll have a range that goes from half of the count as an integer down to one in this case because the edge is not going to be included stepping down of one and when we have this what we want to do is to verify that every index is generating so every access to the sequence with that index is giving me that the two letters are the same and how do we express that with every on the sequence of indexes closing let close indefinite and the function we do need to pass to every is something like it should be equal when I access the nth element of the sequence with the first index to accessing the nth element of the sequence subtracting from the count of all the count of all the elements of the sequence the place where we are at and one for the symmetry and let's see if I if I'm all balanced closing this closing that and we should be good to go so now if I want to invoke palindrome as explained before we need to um, make sure that the letters are all lowercase but they are and there are no spaces so I'm going to remove them um, going to remove if space is equal to the item from s which is our our string that is also going to convert the string into a sequence what we want and palindrome in this case is returning true so this is a palindrome uh, can verify if uh, this is really s this is really the case by changing a random letter to something else and palindrome of s2 
should return false. So it seems to be working. Um, functions that are uh, similar to range or connected to range somehow, one of them is iterate. And you can see that also from the sources. If we dock on range, sorry, if we source on range, uh, we can see that the infinite infinite range, the one without parameter, RET number one, is using iterate increment um, quote zero. Increment quote is uh, the same as increment, but is auto-promoting numbers when crossing beyond the long boundaries. And uh, that's why there is a connection between range and iterate. And uh, iterate can be used as more generic. You can pass another function, um, provided the function takes one argument. And iterate mm -hmm. will uh, invoke uh, an infinite number of times that function against the, the argument. And the output of the, of the function will be given to the same function over and over again by an estimate. Um, so we can do um, iterate not um, true, for example, and that will create this uh, maybe not very useful sequence of alternating true and false, but depending, maybe there is a case where you can use this. Um, so let's talk about a little bit about the performance profile of range. Um, so range is a lazy function, meaning that you can write things like like one followed by 20, ze um, 20 zeros like this. And this is not actually generating any sequence. You can also use the infinite sequence in the same way. Um, even though the range invocation is evaluated. So closure is suspending range. It's not uh, going to generate the sequence. The sequence is generated only on demand when the elements are required. And it is actually uh, re generated in small batches of 32. And uh, we can see that with a little trick if we, for example, assign to access uh, um, the following map where we do just a little trick where we print a dot and then we just return whatever was passed to the map and we for example use range 100 if we now take 5 from this axis we can see that uh, it's printing a few dots if you count them those dots are 32 Two, uh, not 100, so it's not evaluating the entire sequence of 100 elements produced by range, but just 32 of them. Uh, in order to uh, also evaluate the rest, uh, you just need to cross the boundary. So if you now uh, do it again, you won't see the dots because that part of the sequence is already evaluated. So if now if we take beyond that so 33 element we just print the last so we don't clutter the screen you'll see another uh, string of 32 dots and if we do it again the dots disappear so we rendered another small batch of the 100 elements and of course if we continued like that to the end of the range we'll generate all the dots and the lazy sequence will be completely realized. Um, this behavior of range is quite important, but it's not just of range, it's all the functions, all the sequence manipulation functions are uh, also lazy and they all collaborate in this behavior. Um, it's very important because uh, depending on the use case, you might have very large sequences or even streams that are constantly 
like passing through your application and you uh, if you if you pay attention to what you're doing you uh, you can uh, just prevent the entire sequence to ever be in memory at once at the same time so even huge sequences will uh, go through just fine without completely filling the memory and we can see um, how that we, we can see some examples to see how um, this is working if your sample go you want to go to the last element of a very big range um, 100 million something like that uh, it will take some time uh, but the important thing it will never go out of memory and I just happen to have a profiler that I can attach to it just to see uh, what's happening to the to the memory let's see if it's still running and um, as you can see in this part of the screen that now I'm going to isolate so it's clear what we're looking at uh, this is the heap um, and the used heap and the heap size uh, you can see that the blue part the used heap is nicely going up and down up and down up and down and that is uh, because each time it is going down the garbage collector here is uh, kicking in and is actually constantly kicking in but sometimes it's, um, uh, it's removing more um, is collecting more garbage than other times if we go back it's still running we can leave it running the important thing as I said is uh, this uh, sequence is never loaded in memory at once so this program can take as much as CPU um, that is available uh, it will continue running and finish the task without going out of memory um, I think it's all uh, for this screencast, so um, thank you for listening, thank you for watching. Uh, these are uh, a few links where I'm collecting the material and the show notes related to the screencasts. Uh, it's a GitHub repo and I'm going to prepare the, um, the document related to range where I put what we did at the repo and a few screenshots or a few uh, diagrams and so on um, I think it's all uh, I hope uh, I hope you'll, you'll, you'll check again next week for another episode of the pills and uh, yeah I think it's all goodbye